The thing is, I don't want any. The thing is, their podcast is called All the Smoke. I don't want any of the smoke with them niggas. Yo, yo, yo. We love. None. We love, love y'all. Like big respect. fans. Matt Barnes, you like one of my favorite players in the league. Absolutely. Lo- love it. I was. I was. I really enjoyed like Steven Jackson's game. Also, like they're not. He was. Yeah. He probably wasn't an all star because of the whole uh, malice in the palace thing. But he definitely had a year in Charlotte where he like carried them on his back to the playoffs. That's thing. And um, like they really did the thing. But this. They interviewed Draymond Green, and it dropped yesterday, and we watched it today. Ugh. I just want to say, this is this is ridiculous. It's like they would, it was like a dick sucking contest. Yeah, they were trying, man. they were trying to see who could suck off Draymond the fastest. But like, and the why best. Draymond though? And this is the thing about them is like, like you said, they're not media people. But when I look at podcasts or I look at anything media related, and there's an interview subject. I expect the person that's being interviewed or spoken to, um, like, you know, I guess, like, depending on what the setting is, for them to be held accountable to certain shit. And they weren't. So, Draymond, go ahead. No, I just feel like with that, I do agree that you should be accountable for certain shit. I think what all the smoke does, I think their approach is um, they're giving people, because we had Stephen A, they had Stephen Jackson, Mm -hmm. it's not just players. They're giving people a platform where they can just uninterrupted like yeah speak which pros and cons so like yeah we're getting real good information or mm-hmm. like when shannon sharp went on like love uncle shay that's my guy but like there were times where he was just over talking but i learned i learned so much about I, his past oh his past and i appreciated yeah, that yeah. so like you know like those are those are pros but then when you have a guy like draymond who loves himself to death like i've never met a more average nigga in my life who loves himself so much like i, I think like like compared to like everybody else, like bro, like you're just a regular guy. Like you're you shoot okay, you know what I mean? Like you, you understand the game really well, which is dope. You dribble okay, like you're just a regular you're just a regular guy though, and he loves himself so much. Bro, you told me to listen to the podcast and he spoke for twenty minutes straight. I, I texted you also, like he had diarrhea of the mouth. Just with so all much. the stuff that he was saying. So much, man. And when and like when I say the accountability thing. Also about, you know, I guess like uh, Steven and Matt not holding him accountable to certain stuff. Like you could see with how he expressed himself, he doesn't hold himself accountable to certain shit also. Right, 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 right. he starts off, him and Charles Barkley have this back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Charles Barkley likes to say he's averaging a triple single this season. And because of that, he doesn't talk as much, which, you know, Draymond has been quiet for most of the season. Yeah. Uh, the, the Warriors are not having the usual season they've had in the past five years, and that's because Steph's hurt, Clay's hurt, right. and KD left. I think people like me who looked at Draymond and appreciate basketball probably expected him to step his game up a little bit. Probably expected, like, the points to go up, the rebounds to go up, the assists to go up, and the minutes to go up, right? Uh I wouldn't expect that. So I'm going to tell you why I expected it. And maybe I shouldn't have. Okay. But when it comes down to it, years from now, the only thing people are going to really remember are your numbers. Those are the only things that people are going to go to. and Your numbers or your rings? Your numbers and your rings. Or your rings. 100%. We don't remember Robert Ory's numbers. We don't. But we remember his rings because of the impact he had on those teams. Because right. of those shots he hit. It was, he wasn't just riding the pine like James Jones. Right. To get rings. Right, right, he was, right like an integral part of if he's not on this team, this team doesn't win a championship. For sure. Right? So Draymond's numbers this year, eight points a game, six assists, six rebounds. Not bad. Solid, right? 38% from the field, 27% from the three-point line. Now, by those by by that standard, and last season he only averaged seven points a game. So by that standard, you would think maybe he doesn't get a bump in, in stats. Draymond, three-time All-Star, Three-time champion, defensive player. Shouldn't of the even, year. You shouldn't be an all-star for basketball IQ. Does that make you an all-star? It does. It it does when your team is winning, because I think we can both say this is tough. 20, this is tough. In twenty fifteen, Warriors don't win a championship without Draymond. I know how valuable Draymond is yes. to the Warriors. Uh huh. Right. His numbers aren't wowing, and then, like no. I said before, he's a very average guy. And I'll even give him credit because in that game seven that the Warriors lost to the um, to the Cavaliers when the Cavs came back from three one, Draymond had thirty seven and like sixteen in that game seven, and they lost. So he he emptied the tank. Great, that's and, cool. And like they probably 
would have won the series if he never would have got suspended. For right. Like, that's that. That's for, the whole thing. For kicking LeBron James in the balls. And we'll get to that again about having a diary of the mouth and the inability to control yourself. Yeah. No accountability. He said that Charles Barkley is probably jealous of him. And it's because Charles Barkley never won shit. Right. I'm going to ask you this. Would you rather have Charles Barkley's career or Draymond Green's career? As a hooper? And where and where is... In fact, not even career, life. You see what Charles Barkley is right now. Would you rather have that playing career and the life Charles Barkley has, or would you want to have Draymond's basketball career? My answer is I would rather have Draymond's. Career. Okay. You got to tell me why. Okay, because one, I'm, I played with three Hall of Famers. Okay. I uh, was coached under a Hall of Fame coach mm -hmm. in Steve Kerr. He will be in the Hall of Fame, he yes. Be, you know what I'm saying? He's, so he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, historic season. Um, historic. Okay, go ahead. I'm not going to cut you off. Go ahead. Historic, historic, <laughs> historic season with uh -huh. a loss. Okay, with the loss and game. Historic seven. season, but like there was a there was a block where like I was a part of the Warriors team where like we had 2000 and what 2014 to 2000 five straight years in the finals. Yeah, we had it unlock to be in a winning locker room to play with great shooters to win big games. That might be a little more wavy to me than than being Charles Barkley, but who do I respect more? Whose career do I respect more? Charles. Mm -hmm. All right, so you'd rather be Draymond. I'd rather experience the things. Who would you rather be? Stop that. Don't skate. Who would you rather be? <laughs> Stop that. I'd rather <laughs> listen to me, man. Because I'm gonna give you a straight answer. Listen, okay, listen to what I'm saying. Okay. If you had to jump in somebody's shoes, it would be Draymond. Yeah. Okay. It was me. But do you hear? But do you understand why though? I do understand why, and it's valid. Okay, cool. I do understand why, and all it's super right. valid. For me, it's Chuck all day. Why? Listen, man, he went out there on that court and imposed his will on his opponent almost every single night. When he was, people forget like Philly Charles Barkley grab the rebound, push it, dunk on whoever's under the basket. Back on D. Catch it. Uh, in, in the playoffs when he was going up against the Warriors and Chris Webber and Chris Webber was talking shit in, I think, like, game three, comes out, gives Chris, Chris Webber 56. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Like, easy, right? And is just, like, this, like, arrogant, cocky, confident, like, he had dominant. the... He's he dominant. Had he dominant. Dominated, he the, dominated the league. He had the Nike ad, I'm not a role model. Like, there's two people that can say things and they're still gonna get paid by white folks. There's 50 cool. Cent... And it's Charles Barkley. They can say and do almost whatever. 50 Cent yeah. more so than anybody else. Yeah, 50 Cent of course. is the president of the United States. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> He's the president of the United States. Exactly. It's, it's, it's numbers. It's, like I said, it's dominance. It's, I'm on the dream team. Like, I'm with MJ, Pat, Larry, Magic. Right, right. And those are experiences that... That's a great question, man. I think it's a great question. That you can't downgrade. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a great question because Charles Barkley was also... One of those pioneers who was there when the league was changing over and like yes. dudes was dumb nice. Yes. And so like it wasn't sweet in the East and it wasn't sweet in the West. Like he was he he played in an era where we have all our all our Hall of Famers come from there. And he was one of those guys, he was one of those first guys that got paid by the NBA. Because in the eighties guys it's weren't tough. making a ton of money. It's tough. And it's then tough. you know, of course you gotta put MG at the forefront for that, but the influx of talent and not just talent, but personality in the NBA is what got it to where it's at right now to the point where we want to hear from players. We want to like watch them on videos. We want to hear their podcast yeah. when they retire. I'm sure that as great as Chuck's career is as great as um, his numbers are hall of fame and his post career life is, I'm sure a little piece of him does want or has wanted to win a championship and know what that felt like. Maybe when he was a player, I don't think he feels that way now. Probably not now. I don't think he feels, and I don't think probably a lot not of, now. Probably for sure. And I think a lot of people because Chuck found something else that he's really good at. Like he was really he good at basketball. Yeah. He was really, really good at basketball, and he's really, really good at this TV shit. He's yeah, really he like and, like inside the NBA is Top five. is a staple. Yeah, need that. Like everybody's tried to imitate it. Everybody's tried to recreate it. But what Chuck, Kenny, uh, EJ, and Shaq do is like. Yeah. unmatched and for has sure. been for a lot of years even before Shaq got there and I think that's the thing that like gives Chuck confidence to say the stuff that he does and honestly I don't think Chuck has ever said anything super super horrible about Chuck's Draymond not Green. malicious Chuck's not malicious when Chuck speaks but if you if but if you're averaging a triple single <laughs> and you're supposed to Call be like this three-time all-star three-time champion on a team with a bunch of young guys 
and you can't you can't you can't average double digits, double digit points. Yeah, well, because like I mean, like see, this is the thing though. Don't get don't get it twisted. Don't let that all star thing get like all star with what numbers, bro? Like he was never like he's not he's not the people's all star. You feel me? Yeah. He's not he's not your your cookie cutter all star. Like yo, like dominating, lead the league in points, lead the league in assists, lead the league in rebounds, like defense, whatever the case. He's not that guy. He's a guy who does a lot of things well and and glues great players together. Which important is extremely, job. extremely it's valuable. Extremely important and, 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 I, and utmost respect for him and how he managed throughout the years with these personalities. But mm-hmm. at the same token, like you can't talk greasy like you you him. You're not him. Draymond's not him. One of the quotes that Draymond dropped was, he scored more points than me. I right, cool. But that don't necessarily mean you had more impact on the game than me. Now, I think that is... Draymond speaks. He just speaks because that's bullshit. That is bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. And his diary of the mouth. Yeah, yeah, just chatting. He just chats. And and Steve and, and Steve and Matt let him chat. Charles Barkley was a better basketball player than him when he played. And right now, Charles Barkley is a better is a better TV personality than Draymond is a basketball player. This is this is the world we're in right now. Like retired players, former Hall of Famers who have great personalities are on television giving their opinions on the game and on players. It's, it's not a thing where you're going to go out there and have a bad game and you're not going to hear about it or nobody's going to say anything about it on television. I, I, got, I hate the sensitivity that a lot of professional athletes have. And I don't think you can't be sensitive. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that thinks, you know, you should just make your money and shut the fuck up. No. Of course not. You should speak your mind. But if you have a bad game and somebody says you played like shit, spade a spade. I mean, what, what, why are you upset? 